Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lucy and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Nottingham and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how I study now that I'm in the clinical phase of my medicine course. So one of the things I was most worried about when I went into the clinical phase of the course was when I was going to find the time to actually study medicine and make my notes and revise and learn everything while being on a full-time placement. I just thought that my kind of standards of working would just drop and I would just sort of accept that I just wouldn't learn as much as I normally would, um, maybe that I'd neglect things, but actually I've kind of just adapted to be able to work hopefully at the same level I was working at before the clinical phase while being on placement all the time. I have made videos about how I study at medical school and how I make my notes at medical school in the past, so if you want to watch them then feel free to check them out, but I would say that that has vastly changed now and a lot of the things I talked about in those those videos I've kind of stopped doing now. One of the things being making handwritten notes, that just would not be feasible for me to do now that I'm in clinical phase because there just isn't enough time and so I think what clinical phase forces you to do is actually use the time you have more efficiently. So first I wanted to talk about some of the resources that I've used and a lot of these I've only started using since being in fourth year and since being on placement but actually a lot of them in hindsight I kind of wish I'd used previously. So the first thing I I've discovered which has sort of changed my study routine is zero to finals. If you haven't used it or you haven't even seen it before I would recommend looking at it and seeing if it, you think it would suit you because it's so concise and everything is ordered so well, um, it's so easy to navigate around the website and it really does feel like it's covering pretty much all of the main principles, the main conditions you need to know about, the main treatments and everything. I would say that it's not that detailed so um, there have been times when I've sort of had to supplement zero to finals with other resources, but I'll mention them. Um, but on the whole, I'd say that if you learn everything on zero to finals, like you probably will just pass the exams and that's that's at the end of the day all you need to do but um and I think it's very clinically relevant as well like I think I can see myself sort of using it when I'm actually a doctor um because yeah it's very easy to navigate and it's it's quick to find things that you want to know so that's been really really useful especially for obs and gynae it wasn't so useful with psychiatry because it doesn't really have much of psychiatry on it but sort of those big specialities like pediatrics and obs and gynae it's got everything I think you really need to know on there. For obs and gynae I also used Teach Me Obgyne and I kind of used that to fill in the gaps so if zero to finals maybe didn't quite cover something in in enough detail then maybe I'd, I'd add to it from Teach Me Obgyne which is like Teach Me Anatomy, a lot of you have probably used that before. I have also completely stopped making my own notes and I might make a whole video about this um, but basically I use these online resources and I use um, a student's notes from the year above. Um, if there's a year above you at your medical school then definitely ask them for their notes if there's anyone you know because I just kind of realised that there's just no point in me making my own notes. All the information you need to know for medicine is already out there, it's it's in the NICE guidelines, it's on these websites, it's in other people's notes so for me to just start from scratch making my notes especially to handwrite them I just think it would be a complete waste of time. What I am instead doing is making a resource that will enable me to revise and learn the information effectively rather than just information gathering and just putting putting all the information together because other people have already done that for me so there's no point me wasting time doing that and this I think is what has saved me the, the most amount of time now that I'm on clinical phase and to be honest I should have just been doing this from the beginning so to all of you who already do this well done like you're probably very efficient and way more efficient than I ever was so yeah basically I just make flashcards now I use Quizlet I know loads of people use Anki um, there's probably other different sort of ways you can make flashcards but Quizlet is just what I chose um, partly because I felt like Anki was more complicated and I had to learn how to use it and I just couldn't really be bothered to learn how to use it at this point because I've only got two years left and also Quizlet just looks a bit nicer and so far it's, it's done what I need it to do like I, I don't need anything more from it. I think Anki is better for kind of it like sets you flashcards to do each, each day and it kind of um, really makes you sort of do that space repetition process but Quizlet is a lot more sort of self-directed like I will just choose what flashcards I do each day and things but actually I think I'm quite good at managing the flashcards that I'm doing so it's kind of okay. So now I'll tell you about my actual method for making my flashcards and studying. So when I start a brand new topic, so when I started Obs and Gynae, which was something I had not really learned much about at all, the first thing I did was to make my flashcards. So I brought together the information from all the different resources I've mentioned, so zero to finals, the notes from the year above, and Teach Me Obgyne, 
um, and occasionally sort of nice guidelines or other other sort of websites and I put them all together into flashcards and so I pretty much all my flashcards are something like this so I'll, I'll have something like what is an ectopic pregnancy and then turn the flashcard over and the answer will be on the back and then it will be what are the signs and symptoms of an ectopic pregnancy um, what is done to investigate an ectopic pregnancy, what is done to manage an ectopic pregnancy and it will basically just go like that for every single condition I need to know about um, obviously with other sort of factual knowledge as well I'll be testing myself with these flashcards so once they're all made my next step is to use PassMed so I have not used past medicine before, everybody I think pretty much uses it or has at least heard of it at medical school and it's basically a massive question bank and it's so useful. So far I can just tell that I'm learning things so much better by using it um, and because each question you do it has underneath sort of an explanation for, for the answer so why each answer was right or wrong um, and then underneath that it's got the kind of relevant notes so basically every time you're doing a question you can just sort of power through them if you want or what I sort of tend to do is every time I do a question and get it wrong obviously I read the explanation and then I will refresh my memory on that whole condition because then you're not just testing yourself on isolated facts you're constantly testing yourself on whole concepts and whole conditions and yeah I found that I added a few things to my flashcards from that so there were a few sort of good tips that past med had or sort of good facts that kept coming up that I kept getting wrong and then I would realize that they're not actually in my original flashcards so I'd add them in so that's kind of my next step and with OBS and Gynae because there are so many questions on past med that's kind of the stage I'm at so I've made all my flashcards for OBS and Gynae and I'm using past med to just basically to to try and get a good grasp of those key concepts those very examable facts the things that are likely to come up in exams but my next step after that will actually be going through all of my own flashcards because obviously they're going to be more detailed and they're going to cover all of OBS and Gynae, even those sort of rarer bits, bits that might not come up in, in exams, um, because I really want to get a grasp of those sort of finer details as well. So once I've finished all the past made questions, I'll move on to testing myself with my own flashcards, um, which will be a very lengthy process because there are literally hundreds, I think there's over a thousand for OBS and Gynae alone. So next I wanted to talk about how you actually find the time to study so obviously placement is often a kind of nine to five thing so your whole day will be taken up by being on the wards or being in clinics or theatres um, so when am I actually finding the time to make these flashcards and do the past med questions and all of that and my answer to that would be firstly always take your work with you whether you use sort of like notebooks or a laptop whatever you use just always have it with you on placement because there will so frequently be times when you just have downtime or a clinic finished an hour early or something's cancelled or you kind of find yourself not knowing what to do for like maybe an hour or so that's the kind of time when if I have half an hour spare I might sort of be doing some past med questions if I've got maybe a bit more time I might sort of actually get down to making some notes it's just good to have your work with you so you never feel like you're wasting time having said that often especially for Ops and Gynae my days were very full-on in that I didn't really have much downtime so for those kind of days I would kind of finish the day and get back and I would think do I feel like I have learned a lot of things today that I don't really need to do any more studying and if I felt like I had picked up a lot of things from being on placement and like you know if I felt tired or felt like my brain was fatigued then I would just not work for that evening if I felt though like I'd had a pretty kind of chilled day I'd not really exerted myself I'd, I'd not really learned much then I might try and do some work in the evening um, and obviously at the weekends but yeah I think the, the time I did most work was probably just between like clinics or between doing things in the hospital. The next thing that makes studying in clinical phase hard is that it's very self-directed so obviously we do have teaching sessions um, and often I will try to let's say the teaching session is going to be about preeclampsia then I might have tried to already have made my flashcards for that and already done my reading and everything for preeclampsia before I go because then I'm gonna you know be able to follow the teaching a lot easier especially if it's kind of a practical like role play OSCE practice kind of session then I want to know a bit about the condition before I go into it um, but often I didn't have time to do that and so the teaching was kind of a learning it for the first time kind of experience which is obviously okay because that's what teaching is for but personally I find that I I I work better with the teaching sessions if I've already kind of you know done a bit of the background work already but yeah so when I get home and I'm about to make my flashcards how 
do I decide what to what to start with? Because like obs and gynae especially is a massive subject and it just feels a bit overwhelming that it's like, right, I just need to start learning all of obs and gynae. Um, and so the thing that really helped me and probably what most people do is that I will take the conditions or the cases that I saw that day and I will use them to guide my learning that evening or that weekend. So for example, I remember on one of my first days of doing obs and gynae, um, I went to a clinic and I saw a lady who had fibroids and she had um, urinary incontinence. And so that day or that week, two of the subjects I, I tackled were fibroids and urinary incontinence. So um, I'd make my flashcards for those two things. And I know it kind of, there's that temptation to do everything in the order that it's in, like on zero to finals or the order of the notes or the learning objectives or whatever. But I think for me, it helped to base my learning around a particular patient that I'd seen. Um, because firstly, it makes the condition more memorable. And also it just gives you a sense of direction. And obviously you will have to fill in the gaps because you're not going to see a patient with every single condition in obs and gynae necessarily. But yeah, I found that that was a good starting point. So I would think, what are the conditions I saw today, the patients that I saw? Or what are the things that, that I heard about? Because sometimes someone will just mention a condition on the ward and I'll think, oh, I don't really know much about what that is. Or they'll mention... Um, so often people were talking about induction of labour and like in my first couple of days one of the doctors was quizzing me on how how do you induce labour, what do you use and asking me all about it and I literally knew nothing about it because I'd, I'd never done obs and gynae before so I was like I don't really know but then that night I went back and I made my flashcards for induction of labour because I could tell that it was one of those things that, that was just going to keep coming up. So those things that, you know, you're always going to see, the very common things are also good places to start. So like common gynae problems or common things you're going to see in the antenatal clinic, like gestational diabetes is a good thing to just know about before you go to an antenatal diabetes clinic, for example. So you can kind of base your learning on patients you've seen or you can base it on things that you've got coming up. So if you know you're going to a gynae oncology clinic on Friday, then read about the gynecological cancers before you go even if you just have a bit of a background if you know you're going to a theatre session then look up a bit about the particular sort of surgeries you might see like a hysterectomy and things like that so I'd say direct your learning on things you've seen on things you've heard about or things that you are likely to see start with the common things and get to the rarer things later because it's unlikely that they're going to be seen very often on the wards and it's also unlikely you're going to be examined on those things like in your OSCEs for example. So then I wanted to talk a bit about learning actually on placement itself. So obviously using textbooks on, and online resources and notes is, is good, like you do need to know that factual knowledge, you do need to understand the science and everything, but obviously a placement is there as a learning experience. And I think there's always that danger with placement that you're just gonna kind of end up stood on the ward or just stood in the corner somewhere, not really doing anything, not really learning or gaining anything. Um, and I think, firstly, it's a good idea to know when it's time to just call it a day. So if you really don't feel like you can gain anything else by being in the hospital, then you can just go home. Well, at least for obs and gynae, I, I definitely had that flexibility. But there's a few tips I have that sort of helped me to actually really gain some, some good learning experience from the wards. So something I quickly learned was that clerking patients is one of the, the best things you can do for your learning because it allows you to go through that whole process with the patient of their presenting complaint, taking the history, doing the examination, talking about what investigations you'd want and then looking at how you'd manage the patient because obviously a lot of the patients on the ward, they've already gone through that process their diagnosis is already known so it's still valuable experience to to talk to them and to see what's going on but I think clerking patients was when I i I really did learn the most. So for example, in gynae, um, this was patients coming from A&E who were potentially gonna be admitted onto the gynae ward. Or if you're in a clinic, then ask if you can take the history from the patient. So uh, there was one consultant that was really good and every time we were with him, he basically just gave us the patient's notes and went, call them in from the waiting room, take the history and come back to me after and, and, and sort of present back to him. So that was really good because it meant you could just take a history from a patient, ask all the questions you wanted to ask, and then the consultant would talk with you about, okay, now we need to examine the patient, and then sort of would ask you what would you do next, and sort of obviously then they would 
manage the patient. So that was really useful. And as well, there's quite a lot of things in medicine that you just need to kind of see to understand or at least to, to remember them more easily. So one of these was like the stages of labour, for example. A lot of things to do with obstetrics, I feel like you just need to see. So when I was going through and making my flashcards on the stages of labour and kind of all the pain relief and all, all those sort of things, um, I felt like it was quite hard to sort of visualise, but as soon as you've just sat with a woman in labour, you just will remember it forever, I feel like. So, um, yeah, the best thing you can do for like obstetrics is to, for a lady to come in who's presenting with, you know, labour beginning, um, and then just staying with her for the whole labour and the delivery of the baby, because, and obviously that goes for deliveries as well. It's a lot easier to understand how a baby is delivered when you're just there. <laughs> so things like that, do just try and get involved and just see as much as you can because it will help you remember it um, and it will help you learn it in the first place. Yeah, and obviously clerking is probably like the best thing that, that I found that I could do. But if not clerking the patients yourself, then at least just practicing taking a history from a patient who's already on the ward. So without looking at what the diagnosis is, just going and talking to them about their symptoms and taking a, a thorough history and then thinking for yourself, what is the diagnosis? And then going back and looking in the notes and seeing if you were right. And then sort of asking about how they're being managed, what, what medications they're on or what surgery they're waiting for. That's kind of my tips for studying on placement. I feel like it's definitely a transition. It's definitely not the same as just going to lectures and making notes. Um, you do have to adapt. I think overall it is a better way to learn. Obviously it's a lot easier to learn when you're actually seeing things in real life and hearing about patients' real experiences. So I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it and you like sort of medical school videos, medical school vlogs, then um, subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Instagram. My name is Lucy Brett X on Instagram. Um, and I will see you very soon for my next video. Bye.